starting my presentation today, just after lunch, this is unfortunately not the view out of my office, as we saw with Monica a few minutes ago, uh, how even minor changes can increase energy efficiency significantly. We learned a lot from Jens Meyer this morning about initiatives and innovative ideas of HPA. There's not only HPA, fortunately, in Hamburg doing this business in the port. So I'm coming from the HHLA. We are operating the container terminals and the logistics in the port of Hamburg. We have a throughput of about 7.5 million TU a year, operating three terminals next to the city center of Hamburg, and have, in general, three pillars of strategic activities. One is container, which is the most of our revenue and volume. We are operating intermodal own trains into Czech and Poland, and we have a logistics arm. Um, I'm the managing director of HPC. HPC is a consulting firm of HHLA, where we bundle all the innovative ideas and the talents to bring it out in the world and show the people what we do in Hamburg and what we can do also for you in all parts of the world. We have been founded in 1976, have about 100 experts working for us and are active in all parts of the world, also private and public sector. Just let me mention two things. Uh, we have also two subsidiaries, HPTI, where we offer training and management activities, and also transport solution with our daughter called Unit Consult, where we concentrate on air freight and inland waterways, which is not really common, but uh, historically grown. We are also operating the container terminal in Odessa, which is also due to the political situation there quite complicated at the moment and a challenge, but we have been there successful for about 10 years and still growing the business there. Oh, wrong direction, sorry. As said, Henning Kinkos, I joined the company last year. Before that, I spent nearly my entire life for AP Muller Maersk. So I not only in terminals, I also have seen a lot of things in shipping in terminals all over the globe and in logistics. Let me start with the entire topic itself. If you think about energy efficiency, you have to split it into three parts. It's the technical part, where you invest into new technologies, the organizational part, which I will uh, give some more details later on, and at the end of the day, it's also the behavioral part of your employees and of yourself. Starting with the technical part, I give you some ideas what we did in Hamburg, where we have still one of the most modern terminals here in the world. It's changed a bit since the two weeks or three weeks the new container terminal in Rotterdam Mars Flag 2 has been opened. So we are still in the top three worldwide. But at the end of the day, if you look at the terminal itself, and it doesn't matter where it is, you have a lot of vehicles. Vehicles, from a historical point of view, have been powered by diesel or fuel. If you change this to electricity, you have a significant decrease in CO2 emissions and air pollutions. I'll give you some examples on that one. Key cranes, what we see as a major development globally, also in parts of the world where we do not expect it. There are only a few conventional cranes left. So most of them are really already on, el on electric. If you took on the horizontal transport from the K to the yard, you see a lot of vehicles already battery powered or LNG power tractors are also very common. On the yard itself, we can see a rise of automated stacking cranes and electrification of rubber tire gentries. So one of the main levers what the operators for terminals have already chosen to become greener is electrification. Some examples from Hamburg. What we have done here is we implemented a few years ago automated guided vehicles in operation. The highly efficient operations we have there is also that you do not have any idle times so far. You just change batteries. One battery, as an example, has a weight of 12 tons. So it's really, really amazing what's going on there. It's powered by green activity and ready to use in all weather. So we have no freeze issues and so on. Here in Hamburg, also HPA has a huge fleet of electric cars and vehicles. We have, as an operator, the biggest fleet in Europe ports, meaning we have over 60 vehicles, purely electric driven. We have a speed limit of 30 uh, kilometers per hour, 
And the amazing thing is that you do not hear anything. So you not only have an efficient uh, issue or efficient advantage, you also have a noise advantage there. So what I just showed you are only two examples of what we have done over the last couple of years in terms of electricity. But how do we source it? We source it mainly by ourselves. So we have uh, solar energy on the roof of our container terminals. And there we produce CO2-free electricity. So only in 2014, on one roof of our container terminals, we produced 116,600 kilowatt hours, which is not even uh, what we expected, but we increase the number of solar energy areas very significantly. From an intermodal point of view, we have a joint development where we especially designed energy efficient rail cars. What we have done there, I'll show you on the next slide, is we decreased the light weight, we decreased the weight, and especially developed for maritime traffic. So we have less shunting, we have 30% lesser weight, and therefore can transport more container on one train. Also, which is a very innovative idea over the last decade, is the hybrid uh, straddle carriers, where we spend 30% less diesel. Coming to the organizational part of the story, we identified seven levers of energy management. If we start with the planning, it's all about planning. You need to have a strategic planning. You can't do it as a one-off. You nearly make sure so that you have a vision on that. Sourcing is another very important topic where we talked about earlier on. We have renewable energies, meaning just come back to the point of solar energy, for example. Risk management, if you have an idea, you always have a risk. So the diversification of energy sources is quite important. Don't rely on only one source. Process optimization is one of the parts where you do not to need to invest a lot of money, but can really generate a lot of really, really big advantages, uh, which I will come to later on as well. Sustainability, invest in new technologies, as we said, for example, with the electric vehicles. Incentives, if somebody has a good idea, just make sure that he's been honored for it. And what we can see also from our clients, we have a lot of requirements in terms of energy balances. What do you really spend for your operations? How much CO2 emissions do you spend? Just to give you some examples on organization process optimization. What we have done, we have looked into the combined loading and discharging improves. So the conventional move is you have one move where we bring a full container from a discharging from the uh, vessel on the quay. You have an empty move, and you do the same way back with a loading, meaning you have four moves of a quay crane for two boxes only. The dual cycle system, which is developed and also implemented here in Hamburg, will show you that you can do with two moves of a K-crane, also two boxes. One is loading and one is discharging. Give you an example what we did in our, at our container terminal, Altenwerder. We reduced uh, the empty travels by 5,500 operating hours in a year. We saved 350,000 liters of diesel, which is significant. And we also reduced the time of unloaded and empty runs really, really significantly. Another one, which is also quite easy to implement if you have the right idea, is it <laughs> uh, are the twin operations. So it means that you pick two empty, uh, two 20-foot boxes instead of one with one move. Therefore, you have a simultaneous transport of two um, containers and reduce the number of empty drives. Therefore, we only saved in, at one terminal in one year about 100,000 liters of diesel again. And Jens Meyer just mentioned this morning that he turned off the light and implemented um, LED light on the traffic here on the streets in Hamburg Port. We did the same on our terminal. Uh, we saved 1.5 gigawatt hours by default setting a reduced power consumption, meaning what we did, we just used the light when we need it. And this is also not, from an energy efficiency point of view, a very nice uh, idea and development is also good for the people living there. Because if you're living just next to the terminal, you don't want to have a light uh, every night for entire days. 
Strategic planning, I think, as I mentioned already, you need to prioritize risks and opportunities before you start doing any innovations on that point. You need to define your actions at a strategic level, which is quite important. Focus your resources, improve your environmental performance, and also your efficiency in operations. So the energy management plan should be structured as plan, do, check, and act. Plan means what input of energy would you like to give? What are your KPIs on that? What is your action plan? Do, how do you measure your action plan? This is quite important, just not only generate an action plan, just make sure that you also do what you have agreed on. Check, also supervise and the measurement. That's quite important, and don't do it as a one-off, therefore act as a continuous improvement. Behavioral energy efficiency measures, um, this is all about people meaning you can do a lot of rules and regulations which you just learned, but you also can make sure that you have either free zones for cars, trucks, and any kind of equipment, incentive for people using carpools, public transport, or bicycles. For example, we have an initiative in Hamburg using the Stadtrad, meaning you can use a, a bicycle for less than a euro per hour, which is quite good, and we are only using for HHL employees more than 250 bicycles a day which is quite important for us, as the terminals are not really good to reach by bus or public transport. What also is one of our major experiences, you need to have the commitment of your top management. So top management is not convinced of these ideas in terms of energy efficiency, you will never succeed. You also, and this is what, that's what we did, we deployed a sustainability commissioner but the last point, which is who is really in charge of this entire process, but the last point, the behavioral training for employees who are in key positions, like drivers, are really the key factors for success in terms of saving energy and increasing your uh, efficiency. So the adoption of green principle should be a start for all of you to really think about how can we improve energy efficiency by cost reduction, legislation and stakeholder relationships, which are quite important here. But we need to make sure, like we do in Hamburg, we have a really good cooperation between the partners in the port with the town of Hamburg, and we really need to work on that, and I think we are one of the really front runners in terms of energy efficiency and green ports here. Thank you very much for your attention.